In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one style question on the impairment of long lived assets under US GAAP. This is, in fact, the second question in a row, which we are doing on the topic of impairment. In the previous one, we explored how impairment works under IFRS. This one is based on exactly the same scenario, the same data, just a different framework, US GAAP. Be sure to watch that earlier recording as well. You'll find the link to it below in the video description. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want you to have a go at. An analyst at Cosinda Enterprises, a company reporting under US GAAP, has gathered the following information about a group of assets which are collectively tested for impairment. And we are shown the carrying amount, fair value or estimated selling price, selling costs, as well as the present value of expected future cash flows which have been discounted and the total value of expected future cash flows which are undiscounted. What will be the impairment loss recognized in Cosinda's income statement? 7 million, 2 million or 0 euro? I am going to start by repeating something which I have already said in the previous recording. Testing an asset for impairment is all about trying to figure out whether its carrying amount is not overstated. In other words, whether the value at which the asset is carried in the balance sheet is not too high relative to the benefits which that asset may still generate for the business. Now, under US GAAP, performing this test starts with step one, and that's assess the recoverability of the assets carrying amount. And what you need to remember is that an assets carrying amount is considered not recoverable if that carrying amount is higher than the sum of the undiscounted future cash flows expected from that asset. And it is only if this is true, so let me write if true over here, that we proceed to step two, which involves computing the actual impairment loss. Now, to make things somewhat confusing, this loss is the difference between the carrying amount and the asset's fair value. Nevertheless, let's actually check whether we should actually be concerning ourselves with this second step, given the data in the scenario. We are told that the asset's carrying amount is 35 million, and that the total undiscounted value of expected future cash flows is 35.5 million. So, let me put these numbers down over here. 35 million for carrying amount and 35.5 million for the sum of undiscounted expected future cash flows. And obviously, this 35 is actually lower than 35.5 million, implying that at least under US GAAP, the assets carrying amount is considered re coverable. And there is no impairment loss to record. And this is very much in line with answer C.